Friend Like Me is the uh, the tall tale of a young man called Toby who has a genie. And the genie is a bit of a layabout kind of character. He is a genie with infinite powers, so mm. he he doesn't really have to worry about being rude or like, <laughs> um, you know, ignoring people or not saying the right thing. Good man. As far as he's aware, there were only three wishes, and he only wished for two because he didn't want to lose his friend. And he's kind of sitting on this one last wish that his genie can grant him, but he's kind of spent 15 years deciding what to do with this last wish. We meet him in his early adulthood. Um, his girlfriend has recently broken up with him. In a way, the genie, even though he's magic and stuff, it's kind of keeping him back, stopping him getting together with his girlfriend properly. She's had enough with your character, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. She thinks that Jeannie is just a complete layabout, so lazy, doesn't do anything. She wants him to move on with his life and she wants to move on with him, but she can't when this guy's in the way. It's a struggle for him to choose between his best friend and mm -hmm. the person he loves. Jeannie represents Toby's childhood because they met when they were young and he's had this genie all his life and he doesn't want to change it. So he's got to decide, maybe now's the time to make that third wish, what's it going to be? He's going to lose his friend but, you know, if it's, if it's for love, then anything is possible. That's really. a really good description, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It sounds amazing. Have you seen it? Uh, no, absolutely not. No. Thank you. <laughs> Just do the whole thing like that. Hello, good to see you. You're looking well. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my newest film, Friend Like Me. I may well run into some spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet, it will be the first link in the description. Right, so without further ado, let's get started. Iris asks, what was the original concept you had for the film? Did it change as you started filming and casting, or did the film pretty much turn out how you'd envisioned it at first? So the original concept went through a lot of changes. For a while, I'd had this idea of a very grounded comedy where just one one character was magical in some way. As I started to develop it, I got more and more attached to this idea of a genie, as I felt it created an interesting dynamic, but it also had narratively a sort of ticking bomb because of the three wishes. I also very much envisioned it animated, uh, and with a much more cartoony tone. I'd even spoken to my friend Matt Lay about some of the possible character designs. Then, as a completely different thing, I had a concept for a short film called Lola, which was a love triangle between a girl, her imaginary friend, and and her ex-boyfriend. The idea being that she had a very overactive imagination and that often she was lost within her own daydreams. I pitched a lot of stuff to New Form and in the end the idea that struck with them the most was the genie concept but they wanted it live action instead of animated. So I decided to take some of the ideas and scenes from Lola and merge them into the genie concept to make something new. However once that idea was pinned down uh, it really didn't change much from there. Daniela asks how long did the whole thing take from the idea to a uploading it to YouTube. Both the animated genie concept and Lola were ideas I'd been sat on for quite a few months. However, it was only in September of 2015 that I started pitching these ideas to New Form Digital and Friend Like Me was eventually greenlit in the November. I wrote the main body of the script over December, completing the first draft on the 27th. Four days later, I flew out to New Zealand and for the next three weeks, I did script editing and took on studio notes. Meanwhile, my producers, Zach Carney and Sinead O'Quigley, were working on pre-production from the other side of the planet. In the last week of January, once I'd returned to the UK, we did the last bits of pre-production, we did a table read and we did a few rehearsals. Friend Like Me was then shot across five days in the first week of February, which seems like quite a long time for a 17 minute film, but this basically comes down to the fact that there were a lot of locations and unit moves eat up a lot of time. Day one, we shot various black void cutaways, followed by the lake scene. Day two, we shot everything that takes place in Toby's flat. Day three was more of a half day. We shot Gerard the Pizza Guy's flat and the New Year's party. Day four, we shot everything at the pub, including the graduation party. Day five, we shot the kid's birthday party, the doorway scene with Gerard the Pizza Guy, the stuff at India's place, and finally the loft scene. Once we were wrapped, editing took place over the rest of February, post-production pretty much took up March and it was uploaded in early April. So overall, I'd say about four months worth of intensive work. Tasha asks, how did you decide that Bertie, Chris and Tom were going to be your actors and why did you choose them? So normally I'm a big believer in auditions. When I write, I might have a very vague idea of who I might cast, but for me it ultimately comes down to that audition. However, for this particular project, I had a very clear idea of who I wanted for each 
each character, all of whom were actors I'd worked with many times in the past, so I felt a lot more confident going in. Chris was the first person I approached. Uh, I'd worked with him a number of times in the past, but only on very small roles, so I was quite keen to give him the chance to have something bigger to play with. Playing Gene was just fun because he is so much more like confident than I am because of his his own power. We did lots of kind of different takes where I got to do lots of different things because we we weren't trying to get anything too specific with Dean. We wanted him to be a little bit off the wall. Yeah, there was stuff. a lot of like have fun with that. What I think was like a yeah, key theme. Yeah, which is set. it's not something you get told a lot in from a director. It's usually <laughs> right. like, you do it how it, you, I told you. <laughs> so in choosing which elements to bring from Lola and the animated genie concept, I had envisioned keeping the female protagonist, but Newform felt it worked better as a buddy film with two guys. So instead, I decided to flesh out what was going to be a very intentionally two-dimensional male love interest, and instead created India, which I offered to Andrea. Andrea had played Abby in Septum and Hannah in Blue Sushi, and I honestly think she's probably the best actor I know, so I mean casting her was a no-brainer. I had originally imagined Jack Howard as the two-dimensional love interest, however when flipping the genders uh, I wasn't as convinced by him as the now Toby, and so instead offered the role to Bertie Gilbert. Bertie is the actor I've worked with the most, so I definitely felt confident having him as the lead. Toby's comedy needed to be a lot drier than Jean's, and I knew Bertie could play deadpan really well. As well as that, I sort of trusted him to take it to some of the deep for more emotional places later into the film. And finally, Tom as Gerard the Pizza Guy. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Tom is a really good actor, and yet he very rarely gets cast and stuff, so I'd always been keen on the idea of getting him to do some very sort of transformative character acting. Also, fun fact, uh, Gerard the Pizza Guy had initially been written for the mandatory Mitchell Davis cameo. However, as the character developed and his importance within the role sort of accidentally grew, I realised I wanted him to be played with someone I was perhaps a little more familiar with. And yeah, I was lucky enough to have everyone say yes, so that's how the cast came together. Emily asks, I'd love to hear more about the team slash crew. So, the main crew consisted of Kieran O'Brien as director of photography, he held the camera and made sure it looked sexy. Phil Spears as gaffer, he put the lights in places that made everyone look sexy. Rachel Hutchings as camera assistant, she unquestioningly did any Anything that Kieran told her to. Zach Carney as assistant director, he told everyone to do their job quicker. Sinead O'Quigley as on-set producer, she sat in the corner doing emails. Sylvia Ville as costume and makeup, she made everyone look sexy but in a materialistic way. Freya Dolby as set designer, she made sure that anyone who wasn't looking at the actors was also having a good time. Ollie Drummond as sound recordist, he captured the various noises that the actors made. Craig Sefton as script supervisor, he made sure that the noises from said actors were the correct noises. Owen R. Kelly as DIT, he sat in a different corner to Sinead, putting files in folders because some people choose to do that with their lives. Our production assistants were Sam Osman and Thomas Hooker, they did the things that nobody else could be bothered to do. And finally, Kyle Jones and Elisa Spagariol were our on-set photographers, they took the various photos you've just been looking at. Which, segue, are all going to be uploaded to a Tumblr we set up. So if that sounds like your kind of thing and you want to follow that, there will be a link in the description. Indigo asks, what was it like filming slash photographing when Toby's looking through the pictures. So when I first suggested this section, I had imagined that they would be real stills. Uh, my only concern was that they might look a little staged. However, Kieran suggested the better way of doing it would be to shoot them with a really high shutter speed to avoid motion blur such that every single frame looked like a photograph. We therefore decided to play out the entirety of the sections and decide in editing which frame was our favourite. Here's how that raw footage looked. Shocked, and then lead it into embarrassment. 
favorite scenes to direct were the scenes that are going to be on screen for about three seconds which were these photo sort of flashbacks oh yeah where i just decided i wanted to tell these three flashbacks through a series of photographs rather than through film mm -hmm. uh, and what was nice about that is it was very different it was something a bit new like i hadn't been used to doing that kind of thing and we knew that we could kind of mess around with which frames we were using so it was quite fun there was a lot of like improvisation it involved you at one point having to be stood in front of a crowd of like 20 10 year old girls <laughs> <laughs> Drinking, drinking, drinking whiskey. Drinking alcohol, yeah, right. And um, Great day. It was the only moment on set that I think you were slightly self-conscious. Yeah. I just saw it happen to you. I guess I'm I, I, I'm quite brave when yeah. it comes to these things, but then all of a sudden, and I wasn't, I didn't even realize, I was stood in front of all these little kids drinking whiskey and being like, Ugh! and then I suddenly thought, they, they look quite scared in between takes. I'm I mean, a scary it, it man here. brilliant. Ooh, I do like the scene where we argue. Um, you and me. It's, it's an intense spoilers. scene. Yeah, I like the light going off um, in the middle because of the wishes. I think I'm very excited yeah, to cool. see how that'll look with the visual effects. And I think our performances were good. I seem to remember my favorite bit was having to beat up Daniel J. Layton, mm -hmm. uh, which was obviously something I'd wanted to do for a long time. <laughs> and he, and the whole scene was kind of just me punching him in the face mm -hmm. from all different angles. And then you covered him in blood, and mm -hmm. then I got carried away, and there was a lot of swearing and shouting. Mm. Just it, a fun day. I really liked um, shouting across a big body of water. Yeah, I saw Although that the other day. Although it was very cold. It was extremely cold. I was just stood there shivering, waiting in between takes. Anna asks, what was post-production like, and how involved were you in it? So post-production started with Elliot Goff, who edited the film. Our general workflow was that he'd put stuff together, I'd then give notes, and then we'd ping-pong it back and forth until we were both happy. After that, it went to the post team, which consisted of Dan Pugsley doing sound design, Tom Barnes doing score, Michael Dean doing VFX, and Kieran O'Brien doing color grade. Here's what that process looks like before and after they've done their job. You're telling me, for my entire life, I could have wished for anything. At any moment. I was going to tell oh, you. Oh, fuck off. I was. I don't care. Whatever you're about Toby, to say, I don't care. You're my I best wish friend. That you, you're all I've got. Were out of my life. Now 
I tend to take quite an active role in post-production. I feel like as a director, it's important to do so. However, I always try to remain a collaborator with the post team. It's important to remember that they are creative people in and of themselves, as well as having the technical abilities. Donya asks, was touching upon the more philosophical parts something you felt very necessary for the film? Yes. Definitely. I will preface by saying that Friend Like Me had to be around 15 minutes long, which isn't necessarily the longest time scale to explore some philosophical areas with profound depth, but it's definitely somewhere I wanted to go with it. Very often, fantasy and sci-fi are used as a means of immersion to take you into these wonderful, complex worlds. And to be clear, those are some of my absolute favourite films. But I'm also a real sucker for films that take one element of sci-fi or fantasy to tell an extraordinary, but fundamentally very human story. Chris Kendall asks, what was it like working with me? Funnily enough, this isn't the first time Chris has asked this question. What, what was your favourite thing about directing me? What was it like was working it? with me, just quickly? Well, it was in there, uh, um, <laughs> 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 So in my head, Chris is like weirdly insecure about what he's like to work with, which he should be because he's a piece of shit. Okay, here's my real answer. It's kind of what you were saying earlier, it's just the fact that like, we left it really open mm -hmm. and I never wanted to kind of like, tie you down too much to like, oh, this is how I want it to work. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of times where I was just like, go big, and then if needs be, I'd rather be saying like, let's bring it in a bit, <laughs> rather than like, give me more, give me more. Um, so it was a lot of fun kind of like, not knowing quite what would come out of you. There's a line, <laughs> there's a line where you're being um, Aquaman. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and you do an Aquaman impression. I think in the space of one shooting day, Aquaman had about 50 different accents. Hey, does anyone need any water-related crimes being solved? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, does anyone need any water-related crimes being solved? No? Okay, well I'll just, I'll just be over here if anyone needs me. And finally, before we go, uh, the most common question by a mile uh, has been... Will there be more? My answer is a solid maybe. Friend Like Me is definitely meant as a concept piece, a pilot, something that could go elsewhere. And I'd love to, New Film Digital and I will definitely be working hard to get this pitched around to a lot of different places. But I will say this, I had this concept long before I ever envisioned it going to series. If you hadn't noticed already, I am a big fan of bittersweet endings. I think there's something quite tantalizing about them. So there's every possibility I will be a massive dick and end things there. Cause I'm a horrible, sad, evil man who is broken and horrible. And on that note, <laughs> thank you for the support for the film. And it's, it's doing great and I'm really happy and everyone's been really kind about it. And posters, this is gonna be, you know, if you're at MCM, Comic Con, London, if you're at Summer in the City, whew, we're gonna have some pretty, some good po- there they are, whew, aren't they looking good? So, oh yeah, gotta, mmm, thank you for the support, I had a lot of fun making it, and I'm glad that you liked it. Watch it again! Watch it again! What? Yeah.